first off, kind of a personal story for me. Last, uh, last year, when I was at Concord University, our, uh, we were a Division II school, so we're not as blessed as we are here at the University of Tennessee to have a nutrition staff. So um, our strength and conditioning coach, he handled our nutrition. The friend of mine and myself, we decided that we were going to start taking a supplement. We were seniors. We wanted to be the leaders in the weight room, the leaders on the field. So we, we asked our strength and conditioning coach, hey, is Jack 3D something that's going to cause us to fill a drug test? He did some research. He came back with a no, which later we found out was not true because of the fact my friend actually ended up getting drug tested by the NCAA last week before we started summer break. He was declared ineligible, lost his senior season because my strength conditioning coach at Concord University did not know Jack 3D was illegal. And uh, the NCAA ended up telling him, you know what, it was your own fault, your own stupidity because you decided to take it. So for me, the question was, how can we have such a difference in what we know and what is actually in a drug? So the FDA and supplements, what do they what does the FDA have to say? Basically, the FDA says companies can make their own supplements as long as they're safe, and then uh, the FDA actually doesn't even care what's in it as long as they're safe for the public. So according to the 1994 Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, the manufacturer, not the FDA, is in charge of the safety of a dietary supplement prior to its introduction on the market. And that means that the FDA has nothing to do with what you say about a supplement, what you put in it. You can say that this is the best supplement in the world. It doesn't matter if it is or not. If you say it and you believe it, then the general public's going to have to believe it unless you are proven otherwise. And then here's the list of all the supplements that are banned by the NCAA. There's, I believe, 49, 59 listed here. And then at the bottom of each list, you can see interrelated compounds. Interrelated compounds could be hundreds of thousands of things. But for me, as I look at this list, and I'm going to does anybody have any idea what the supplement or the uh, drug Cinephrine does? And it would be this one. Anybody? It's a stimulant in a cold and allergy uh, that you would use in a cold and allergy drug, as well as a weight loss supplement. So, if you look at this, I mean, you can go down this list and yeah, we know what caffeine is, we know what ephedrine is, but there are some of these that we have no idea. So, as strength coaches, how do we, how do we take care of that? I mean, if you don't know what it is, then how can you tell your guys, don't take this? And then, according to like, a lot of athletes will say, but I didn't know it was illegal. That's their argument to the NCAA. That was my friend's argument when he received his letter from the NCAA that, hey, you're ineligible. The NCAA says, guess what? Ignorance is not an excuse. They do not care. You're, when, according to the NCAA Eligibility Center, when you decide you're going to take a dietary supplement, you're taking your eligibility into your own hands. Because um, when supplements are made in a factory, such as UPS labs, there are other things that are made there with illegal supplements. And if you take that and it accidentally gets mixed with the supplement that you take, tough luck. You basically screwed yourself. So the first supplement I decided to talk about was Jack 3D, and that was because mainly it's close to me, especially being we lost one of our best offensive linemen because of this. Jack 3D is made by uh, UPS Labs. There's nothing listed, as you can tell, in this list over here, and you also have a list on the supplement, supplemental sheet, there's nothing down through here that is listed on this over here. You can look and compare, there's absolutely nothing. So what is it that caused the, uh, the positive drug test? And right here it is. The dimethylalanine, which is listed under, right here, one and three. Also known as methylhexamine, and the chemical structure is similar to an amphetamine. Right here, the chemical structure is also on your PowerPoint slides. And when these metabolize in the body, the metabolites of a methylhexamine and an amphetamine are exactly the same. There's no difference. And when you take a drug test, that drug test doesn't know that, well, you were taking a methylhexamine, 
So it's not the same metabolite as this. It just sees that metabolite and it says that's a positive drug test. And then Jack 3D, it's not the only one. All these are, can be purchased supplement warehouse or GNC. So your athletes have very easy con or access to them. Hemo Rage Black, it's listed down through here, one and three. And then the same thing by Life of Six, one and three, dimethylhexamine. And then one MR, this is a new thing that's definitely that started and it also has it listed as one of the ingredients. So methylhexamines are one of those things, and this is definitely not a whole list of all that methylhexamine is in. This is just the easiest ones to get a hold of. And you can go to GNC right now and purchase, and they're not gonna say, and if you ask them, well, am I gonna be able to pass an NCAA drug test? Some meathead that's working at the GNC counter is probably gonna be like, yeah, whatever, you can pass. The second is Animal Stack 2. This is another one that you can buy GNC, on supplement warehouse, and their slogan says it's designed to help you pack on muscle and increase strength and improvement workout efficiency with natural and legal ingredients. Well, obviously, something's not legal because if you take it right now, you would not pass an NCAA drug test. And here's why: doesn't it has growth hormone secretogenes listed in it? But over here, under growth hormone or under peptide hormones, I don't see. Anybody see that on your list? Is that one of those listed? So, so what exactly is this growth hormone? It's a synthetically produced growth hormone that was patented in 2002, and its intended purpose is for those who have a low growth hormone rate, so for those with a growth deficiency or anything like that, it's supposed to be more more, it's supposed to be safer to take than injections from actual HGH. And as you can tell, looking chemically structure-wise, this growth hormone, the uh, patent one that is synthetically produced, is nearly exactly the same as the natural one produced in your body. So again, metabolites, your body starts breaking it down. When you take that drug test, it can't tell that this was synthetically produced and this one was naturally produced. It just knows that your levels are too high that you're not going to pass. And then the final thing, and then we've got all these, and again, these are all available, GNC, Supplement Warehouse, purchase them online. And I know for me, when I was an athlete, as long as it didn't say it on the back label, I didn't care. If it wasn't on there, I didn't think it was illegal and I was going to take it. And I feel like a lot of athletes are the same exact way. They don't see it, so they don't think it's really there and it's not going to affect their eligibility. Finally, we're going to talk about caffeine. Um, caffeine is one of those things that a lot of people don't understand. Well, why does NCAA ban it? You know, it's not completely banned yet. Uh, 15 micrograms per milliliter of caffeine can be present, present in an athlete's uh, blood system and urine when they take a blood or urine test and they're still going to be able to pass. And according to the NCAA website, if you're a normal male that is normally hot, like basically normally hydrated, you're not dehydrated at all, you consume about 400 milligrams of caffeine before you're risking not passing a drug test. But then comes the question, how many of our athletes are actually 100% hydrated like they should be? I'm going to guess not many. And so dehydration is going to equal a more concentrated urine, which means it's going to take less than that 400 milligrams of caffeine for your fellow drug test. Some of the common caffeine contents, um, I know Coach Larson's not in here, but he loves Monster Energy drinks. And they've got 160 milligrams for 16.4 ounces. So that size bottle, or that size can right there has 160 milligrams. One of those cans, you could drink two and a half of those and still be right on the line as long as you're fully hydrated. But if you look at the actual content per ounce, it's about 10, about 10 milligrams per ounce of caffeine. And your cup of premium coffee. So I know a lot of you guys probably like coffee, and I know when I was in college, that was what kept me alive during the months of uh, school because I stayed up and slept maybe two hours a night. But the cup of premium coffee, 175 milligrams for every seven ounces, which means you drink two and a half cups of premium coffee, and you are going to be over the limit. And that's if you're normally hydrated. 
Red Bull energy drinks, they only have 80 for 8.2, so again, it's not that much, and you'd have to drink several of those, way too many for you to be healthy any other way to be over. And then finally, Joel Cola, this is something that isn't as readily available anymore, but it has 280 milligrams for every 23.3 ounces, and so you could drink one and a half of those and you would be over the limit. So for us, what does all this mean as strength and conditioning professionals? Um, like I said earlier, we're not all going to be lucky to be at the University of Tennessee where we have a great nutrition staff with people like Allison and her interns who can tell you, hey, this is not going to work, this is not going to work, this is not going to be able to pass. A lot of us are going to be on our own to understand that our kids, they've got to know that they can trust us to tell them, hey, you can't take this or you can take this and you're going to be able to pass a drug test. Because in my case, right now, it's still hard for me to go back and look our strength and conditioning coach in the eyes knowing that he screwed one of my best friends over and that he possibly could have cost us games, kind of like Coach Binkley talked about with effort. I mean, a lot of it has to do with, I mean, we were down when we started the season because we were down one of our best offensive linemen. So for us, knowledge is power. you got to understand. you got to be able to research this stuff, look into it, and say, this is in there, and this is like a metabolite of it, so we can't take it. And one of the coaches I used to work for uh, in my previous internship he told me that our job as strength and conditioning coaches is to keep the athlete on the field. A lot of people say, oh, college athletes don't get paid. In my mind, they do. You're getting a $100,000, <laughs> basically, payment to go to school. They are paying for you to go to school. So our job is to keep our investment rich. And if they're sitting on the sidelines for whatever reason, obviously we're losing money. We're wasting a scholarship on somebody that should be playing. And yeah, we can take their scholarship away for eligibility, but if it's our fault, that they lost their eligibility. I mean, how do you feel? You know, you're telling a kid, hey, it's my fault that you lost your eligibility, but guess what? You're not going to go to school for free anymore, and it's not your fault at all because I told you it was okay. And also, we should educate our athletes because a lot of athletes, and I know even here, don't ask. They just assume. And if your athletes are educated on the fact that there are drugs that don't say on the back, this will not pass an NCAA drug test with an ingredient, they need to know that so that when they start looking for things and supplements to take at GNC or wherever they may purchase them from, that there may be a chance that they don't pass unless they bring it forth or they have the knowledge to know what's in it. Then, all my resources. Any questions? <laughs>